It's 10 o'clock in the morning. The water is a bit high from recent rain, and Jerry Staggs and Jim Hedrick are about to go fishing. What we're doing today is we're using electrofishing, which is an electrical current in the water, and just stuns the fish temporarily so that we can capture them. Obviously, Staggs and Hedrick are not your typical fishermen. They are with the Division of Natural Resources. Their goal is to catch 20 smallmouth bass for a study to determine what is causing the river's male bass to develop female eggs. My son comes up every year camping with me and we camp over that way around the trough area. I don't want to eat anything from over there. I think it's bad. For three years, Vicki Blazer has been trying to find out what's going on. She's studying the issue for the U.S. Geological Survey. Um, broadly, intersex is, is any indication that there are characteristics of both sexes in a species that should only have one sex. There are actually some fish that are naturally hermaphroditic or that change sexes throughout their life, but bass don't do that. So anything like, um, for instance, the immature eggs in the testes, spermatogenic cells in the ovaries, uh, oviduct formation in a male fish, any of those things are considered intersex. Blazer and her crew have been going to several places along the South Branch since 2003. The study covers much of the Potomac River Basin. 60% of the male smallmouth bass they've collected have the intersex condition. Blazer collects fish from five different places on the South Branch. Today, she's just north of Romney. We need six more fish. By noon, Blazer and her crew had dissected 14 male and six female bass. Yes. I'm bleeding the fish. Um, and then back in the lab, we centrifuge the blood to get the plasma. And in the plasma, we uh, measure reproductive hormones, uh, cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and uh, the telogenin, which is a precursor of egg yolk. They put segments of fish testes and liver in test tubes. They also remove the anterior kidney. Which is sort of the uh, equivalent of bone marrow. And, and then those samples will go back to the lab and we do immune function assays on those to, to try to figure out whether they're more or less susceptible to diseases. 293. Estrogen and substances that mimic estrogen cause the intersex fish problem. Blazer is trying to figure out how these substances are getting into the river. It's not only estrogen or the synthetic estrogens like we have in birth control pills. And, and those sorts of things come from both, both wastewater, human wastewater treatment as well as agricultural runoff because animals naturally, humans as well, produce estrogen and testosterone and so they excrete it. So uh, one source is these intensive animal feeding operations, um, wastewater treatment plants, but then there are a lot of chemicals that act as estrogens. Some of the pesticides, herbicides, uh, plasticizers, things like that. And we don't really know here in the South Branch yet exactly what, what's going on. The U.S. Geological Survey is collecting water and sediment samples for the study. Blazer hopes to find a common link between those samples and tissue samples she's collecting from the fish. She's hoping this will pinpoint where the pollution is coming from. I'm an 18-wheeler mechanic, okay, and I hear drivers talk and everything, and I hear the chicken plant, I hear mills, I hear... Um, the cabinet place out there in Moorfield. I hear everything, a lot of stuff. For our environment, for me, in my environment, I just, I don't know, I don't know how to even explain it. It's hard to see everything go down the drain. <laughs> Sad. Sad, it's tear jerking. But 
Can't stop progress. You can only go where you think it's clean and hope for the best. For Outlook, I'm Cecilia Mason in Hampshire County.